David made a covenant. Everybody say covenant. covenant. Because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan took off the robe that was on him and gave it to David. With his armor, even to, even to his sword and his bow and his belt. If you're able, we're going to jump to Ephesians chapter 2, starting at verse 19. It says, Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members. Everybody say members. members. Of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, Pastor Benjamin preached on this last Sunday, in whom the whole building being fitted together, say fitted together, together. grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together, say built together, together. for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. And lastly, I'm going to read it fast for you. Psalm 50, verse, chapter, uh, ch chapter 50, verse 5, it says, gather my saints together to me. Yes, it's time to gather, people. Amen. The word of God says, gather my saints together to me, those who, made, who have made a covenant, say covenant, covenant. with my sacrifice. Let us pray. God, teach us how to build covenant friendship here at Lineage. Lord, remove every hindrance within us that keeps us from building that intimate friendship with one another. Father, will you teach us this month how to build a biblical view of friendship? Teach us how to go deeper in kingdom relationships and break off every lie of the enemy that pre prevents us from having kingdom friendships. Lord, will you anoint each one of us to be our brother's keepers. Show us how to wander in the gifts you have given us and update our operating system within ourselves. Help us to be a household of God that empowers people to look deep within ourselves and receive healing and to mature together. Father, anoint every mind and heart today. Give us understanding. Help us to be the doers of your word, we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, my friends who are joining us online, can you not text us in the group anymore? Because it will make a sound. <laughs> Stop texting. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to talk about biblical friendship. You like that? Huh? I want you to know biblical friendship is based on covenant. Everybody say covenant. Okay, we're going to re-situate. Okay, am I too forward? So they can see me. Oh, so they could see me. Yeah, you, you want to see me. Yes. Okay. When you make covenant with one another, that covenant has power over jealousy, fear, shame, despair, you name it. Covenant has a spiritual authority and power, right? That, and to, to that power to empower us to build an intimate relationship, friendship that God meant for you and I have to have as Christians, as sons and daughters of God. Think about it. We're going to learn from David and Jonathan today, right? Jonathan, okay, had every right, okay? He had every right to fear and be threatened by David's existence. Those of you who are new to uh, Christian world, Christianity, let me tell you about David. David was a king, but he was the second king of Israel in the Old Testament. The first king was Saul, okay? While Saul was a king, David became one of his warriors, okay? 
However, okay, friends, stop texting. <laughs> I know I look beautiful. <laughs> She's like, oh, Sunny looks so beautiful. I know, stop texting. <laughs> trying to preach. <laughs> now, David, he was a warrior, and he was a man after God's own heart. You see, David wasn't pursuing opportunities, success, or his own name. He was pursuing after the heart of God. And because of that, guess what? He was very successful as a warrior. And because of that, the king Saul was threatened. He was threatened by David's existence. And he hated David. He was jealous of David. And he tried to kill David. But Jonathan was Saul's son, firstborn. You know what that means? It was Jonathan's inheritance to be the king, the next king. And Saul wanted his own son, Jonathan, to become the king of Israel. But then David comes into the picture, and it seems like the whole country, everybody loves David. Everywhere he goes, he hears people praising David. And, and Saul is thinking, oh, man, what else can he take? He's going to take my kingdom. That means my son's not going to be a king. And Saul was jealous. He was afraid, and he wanted to get rid of David. And all David wanted to do was to serve the kingdom and the king. You see, Jonathan had every right to be threatened by David's existence. Jonathan had every evidence on earth to fear David taking what is meant for him. But you see, Jonathan knew the power of covenant friendship. You open your Bible one more time. 1 Samuel 18, verse 1. It says, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and he loved him as his own soul. Verse 3, then Jonathan and David made covenant because he loved him as his own soul. Hmm? He loved David as his own soul. You know what God is calling us as a household of God? That this friendship we see in the Bible between David and Jonathan, this is not meant for just specific individuals. You understand? It's not just, it's not just made for these two. It was meant for his people who enter into a covenant with God. And once you make covenant with God, God is calling us to make covenant with one another. That's what marriage is. You fall in love, right, and you decide to get married. And when you stand before God, before his, your family and friends, and when you say, I do, you are making a covenant. Everybody say covenant. covenant. And in this covenant relationship in marriage, you're going to see a lot of not good things in one another. You, talk, you heard Benjamin speak last, even last Sunday, right? We're going to trigger one another. You have your own hurts. I'm going to have my own. And when we make covenant, we are choosing to walk together in close proximity and without crying. Me just turning this way, I'm going to slap your face with my ponytail. Have you done that when you were young? Have you been hit, hit by one? Oh, my God, they're painful. Close proximity. You can't help but to get hurt by one another. But w without covenant, when you're hurt, you could walk away. But when you make covenant, even if you were hurt, you're saying, I will not walk away from this relationship. Yeah. As sons and daughters of God, 
in the Bible from Old Testament to New Testament, God always comes back into the picture and he renews covenant with his people. He gathers his people to make covenant. This whole uh, 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 membership thing that we did last month, right? The whole covenant series that we did is just that. Us as households of God coming together before God. God, we want to renew our covenant with you, which means even when I don't understand why you wouldn't intervene, even when I feel abandoned, even when I feel something that's not positive, I'm saying I'm going to remain. I make covenant with you. I renew my covenant with you, and I'm not going to turn my back on you, God. And in doing so, as we renew our covenant with God, we are renewing our covenant with one another. Chen Wei Dairel, thank you for allowing me to come closer to you than ever. But in doing so, I have, I have more, more, I, I get to hurt you more. More than someone sitting way in the back. But even though I could hurt you, you did not walk away from me. That's covenant friendship. You hear me? That's covenant friendship. So let's learn about covenant friendship from David and Jonathan. Can we do that? It says Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. Just like we read in Ephesians, we are members. Everybody say members. Members Members of the household of God being fitted together, kneaded together to become a dwelling place of God. I worship God. I pray to God at home alone. But the presence of God that I experience when we come on Sunday, it's another level, guys. When when you make covenant with me, We are fitted together to become a dwelling place of God. There's a difference between the presence of God where God dwells. There's a difference in the the, the availability of the sweet presence of God when we gather together in covenant relationship. We're saying, Chen Wei, you hurt me really bad when you didn't call me back for like three months. She never did that, but I'm just making it up. (laughs) Maybe I did that to her. Hmm? But thank you for not walking away. Thank you. That's covenant. We are fitted together. It says, Jonathan loved David as his own soul. We often think that kind of intimate love is just between men and women right? We just romanticize this marriage, and we think, and this world has sexualized intimacy. And so because of that, when you become intimate with a brother and a sister, apart from marriage, this world, right, made them go into sexual intimacy when you could have deep intimacy without having sex, when you have covenant relationship and we get young people get so confused man I like I love my best friend as my own soul oh does that mean I'm in love with her does that mean no it's called intimate covenant relationship love covers multitude of sin I don't have to let you walk all over me I'm not going to that's not true love Covenant relationship doesn't mean I let you treat me like something, right? That you could step all over me. No. When I make a a right boundary around our friendship, I'm also loving you. But what I'm saying is, even if you hurt me 77 times, I choose to cover you with my love. I choose to forgive you. You see, Jonathan protected David even from his own father. Hmm? He helped David escape from his own father. And Jonathan, even if it meant to give up his inheritance as the next king, he believed in David's destiny over his life. You see, when we walk in covenant friendship, I could see your destiny clearly 
Even when you lose the sight of your destiny, I could believe, I could see, and I could be your number one fan. Hmm? Jonathan and David made a covenant. It's, they didn't just, oh, I like you. Oh, I like you too. Okay, let's be BFF. And then, oh, oh man, I don't like you anymore. No, you, they didn't just feel love one another, but they made a covenant. Everybody say covenant. When you sign membership for us, it's not just a religious activity. Oh, we're trying to grow our church, so it's all in a membership. That's not it at all. Please hear me. It's not about membership. It's about covenant. For Benjamin and I, when you sign that membership and we sign that membership covenant, I am spiritually responsible for you. I will love any other Christians all over the world, but I am not responsible for them. But you who signed the covenant, I will take personal spiritual responsibility and vice versa. You know what I learned is this. I'm not just covering you as your pastor. When you make covenant with me, I am covered by your love, by your friendship, and by your faith. It's mutual. Hmm? Making covenant is a result of love. I'm choosing to walk in love. Covenant is legally binding a loving relationship. You know, sometimes when girl and boy, they date for seven, ten years, but they don't really get married, they don't tie the knot. They haven't made their, the love is there, but they haven't legally bind, bound it, which means they could walk away anytime. That means I like you, I love you, but not enough, not enough to stay with you no matter what. Till death to us part, that's covenant relationship. For me as a Christian pastor, yes, I have that with my siblings and with my husband. But guess what? I have that with our members. I have that with our members. Covenant relationship. My love, my friendship with you has been legally bound. Till death do us apart, Sharon. Till death do us apart, Briante. Covenant. We have covenant with one another. Hmm? We are made for covenant relationship. That's what God meant from the beginning. Hmm? Jonathan, when he made covenant with David, he took off his robe. You know what that robe represents, guys? His dignity. I don't have to fight for my dignity in my relationship with you. The prince had a robe. He took that robe, his dignity, and he put it over David. He gave his armor protection. He gave up his protection. I'm not going to protect me. I will give my protection to you. I want to do whatever it takes to protect you, my friend. He gave his sword and bow. He gave his weapon. Hmm? He gave his belt security. What happens, you know? When you don't have a, when you're a big pants, you don't have a belt, what happens? Huh? You need some security, you know? <laughs> Cover up, you know? But Jonathan gave all that to David. That's why, that's why covenant relationship takes you into a deeper, intimate relationship. Let me tell you what covenant relationship is not. You ready? It's not an option. As a Christian, it's not an option. You're just choosing not to tie the knot, in a sense. It's not an option. We were meant for covenant relationship. Number two, it doesn't mean you have to be best friends with every member at our church. Which means you don't have to feel less than because Sharon is very close to, I don't know, who are you close to? Joyce. That, it doesn't mean you're less than Joyce in your relationship with Sharon. Right, right. Okay? And I think, I believe, Pastor Jeremy is going like, to talk more about that, about Jesus and the 3, 12, right, and 70, right? It doesn't mean like three are more important to Jesus than the 12. No. Jesus loved everyone the same. 
okay? We'll talk more about that later, okay? Covenant relationship doesn't mean that you could only take it, you could only make it when you naturally feel like you fit. Oh, I feel like I fit. I feel like they get me. I feel like I belong. And that is not covenant relationship. David Earlman is a white man. I'm a Korean Asian woman. But you know what he said? You heard this many times. You know why I keep repeating this publicly? Because, David, your existence gives me so much security. Your existence gives me so much loyal love. You know what David said? P.S. I'll go anywhere in the world with you. Even if I lose my life. Is it because we have same hobbies? Is it because we like the same thing? We do not like the same thing. Is it because our personalities match? No, I'm crazy intense. And I'm impatient. Often on the mission trip, I'm like, David, come on. David, let's go. David, put that spoon down. And David, he knows I love him. He's not afraid of me. If you're, you're like, oh, okay. And David's like, I'm not finished. <laughs> Come on, David. Thank you for not stop being you, even with your own pastor. Thank you. Thank you for loving me just the way you are. This is covenant relationship. We don't naturally fit at all, guys. I mean, Brianta, I, I tried to fit, you know, that's why I got that, you know, that, that, that my first tattoo with Brianta, you know? With... It was painful. But I realized I don't have to get any tattoos to walk in covenant relationship with Brianta. Hmm? <laughs> what covenant relationship is not expecting, don't be scared, I'm just intense, guys. <laughs> it's not expecting people to pursue you and just love you even when you are resisting them. It's mutual. It's mutual. When you choose to walk away, when you choose to isolate, and you get hurt that nobody called you, that's, no, that's not covenant. When you come back, we're going to accept you and love you. We're going to walk with you. But it's not that blinded expectancy. Everybody say, update. update. I hear the Lord saying to us, every one of you, you need to update your operating system, people. Okay? Let me read you. Okay? We have been living with an operating system that has bugs, and does not have the right functionality to live in covenant relationship. No wonder you couldn't go deeper. It's because you haven't updated your operating system, okay? The operating system needs to be updated. Computer, phone, if you don't update this thing, I don't care how much capacity is left in them, it's not going to function. Right? I mean, uh, Joshua Mann's like stayed up all night trying to update Benjamin's computer. That's only two years old because it hasn't been updated. Hmm? Listen, system updates fix bugs, okay, and increase functionality. You want to increase your functionality? You need to update your operating system, okay? They also make your operating system function more efficiently. Everybody say efficiently. efficiently. Using less energy so that you can use more apps simultaneously. You, you know, like walk in covenant relationship with, that more, than, with more than one person. Okay? But if you don't update your devices, your brain, your mind, even if you have plenty of capacity, you're still operating out of the old system. Everybody say old system. Subject to the bugs, and you are less efficient and effective. 
And you can end up complaining about things that other people don't have to deal with because they have taken the time to update their devices. You need to update your operating system. Okay? Everybody say update. Let me explain this really quickly. This is what I recently learned, guys. What I learned is this. Out of pain, when somebody hurts me when I was a child, I make certain conclusion. I make certain judgment about life. And once I make that assessment, it's hard to change it. And once I make that, I store it in my brain. And then all my life, I look for evidence to support that. So when I was young, I made this, this belief, core belief, that you can't trust anybody. You can't rely on anybody. You have to be the strong one. Why? Because even when people love you, they're too busy dealing with their own pain. And once they are struggling, they're going to abandon you to yourself. Because of that, don't expect anything from other people. You just have to deal with it on your own. So that, I made that judgment. It's stored in my brain. And now all my life, I'm collecting evidence and I'm filing them in my brain. So my husband, this nice guy, this guy who never even backslid, okay, who kept himself pure, this kind man. I make covenant relationship, right? He could do 100 things to be there for me. You know, like after hiking, I don't know, 10, 10 miles, and I'm hurting, and he's massaging, you know, my legs till 1 a.m. That's kind of nice, right? Or, you know, carrying all the grocery bags in, into the room. There's 10 bags. Go ahead, Sonny. Just go in. I'll take them all. Thanks. 21 years of marriage. I don't have to carry in, right? You know, I don't know. Like, when he makes extra money, you know, he just gives it all to me. <laughs> you know, a lot, a lot of good things. But those good things... They like, I notice it, and for a moment, oh, that's nice, but they fly away. They don't get filed. But you know what gets filed? That one time. That one time when I was pregnant with Alethea and I couldn't eat anything. And I got mad at him. And I said, You trying to kill me by making me food that I can't eat? That one time, he didn't know what to do. So he went to work and left me home for a few weeks, hungry. Sick, that is filed here forever. You know, that one time when he got overwhelmed, that one time that he wasn't there for me gets filed. I look for evidence. And that file becomes my operating system. And when I come to church, and when you don't sign up, or when you say you'll come and you don't come, my brain says, see? I knew you couldn't trust anybody. Even if you came to my house every week to help me with something that, I, that doesn't get filed, but that one time, it's not just me. It's all of you. You, 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 all of you. You know what? That's why we need to update our operating system. I'm going to quick. I don't have that much time. I want to quickly go through this. In your right side of your brain, okay, neuroscience for a little bit, there's four levels, okay, level one, two, three, four. This is how you process information. When you, when you, when you receive information, when you see different, right, the, it, it goes into, right, from bottom up. Level one is attachment. And your brain asks this question, this is big for me. Will you be there for me? Okay. Level two is assessment. Is this good? Is this bad? Is this evil? Is this safe? 
okay? Level three is attunement. I could think and feel like the one that I love. Attunement is understanding. I could understand you, you could understand me. We have mutual mind. And when you do, when you process information and situations correctly, you live from level four, which is your action and identity. You act like who God made you to be, okay? However, you know what I realized, guys? Because I had a wrong operating system in one area in my life, okay? Benjamin and I, for 21 years, we've been demanding mutual mind, the third level. Understand? Why can't? I don't, want, I don't get you. Why are you making a big deal out of this? How many times? And he's like, oh, I have a headache. And he wants me to have a mutual mind. I'm like, oh, are you okay? But I'm thinking from my father, I'm like, it's like I'm about to die. And you want me to, like, have sympathy for your headache? Uh-uh. You weren't there for me when I had flu and I almost died of coronavirus? What? What? You, well, you know what we're trying to do is we, wanna, we want to connect in the third level. But... I was stuck in level one, guys. I'm just being real with you. My level one is this. Will you be there for me? No. You know why? Because I was left home alone when I was three, four, five years old. And because I was scared, I would go into a dark closet and I just wait. I would wait for adults to come. Somebody please come home and no one would come. And you heard about this, right? My when my grandmother went to move back to America or move to America, my family forgot that I existed on the, no, just kidding. <laughs> and so nobody made me lunch. And I was too young. At that time, I'm pretty old, guys. At that time, to make anything, you have to turn on this gas that I couldn't even reach. And then you have to get a match to turn on the gas thing to even make anything. I was too small. I didn't know how to make my own lunch. So often, I would go to school hungry, and then I had no lunch. And because I, and I knew my family loved me, but they were struggling. They were like surviving on their own. So what that told me was, you can't trust mommy or daddy. You can't trust anybody. Even grandmother that raised you, well, she moved to, she left you. I lived out of that. And because of that, I get stuck in attachment level a lot. And so you know, in my relationship with Benjamin or with everyone, when I feel like you're not there for me, and not because you're not there for me, you're there for me, you want to be there for me, but I create this world with my pain, and even if you're there for me, I can't see it. I feel like, no, you're just selfish man, or you're just selfish, you're not, I can't trust you. And I get stuck. Once you get stuck in that level, you can't get to the third level. My husband gets stuck in assessment. To me, to him, he lived in fear. And so, you know my intenseness? <laughs> he feels, I'm like, without him knowing, I became that unsafe presence. He loves me to death. But sometimes, remember he talked about him avoiding me? It's because he, don't want, he doesn't want to get criticized. He's afraid of rejection, so he avoids, I love you, yeah, you know, look, in, look into my eyes, I love you. <laughs> you know what, Benjamin and I realized, past almost two and a half months, we've been dealing with our inner mess. Benjamin asked, man, Sonny, I want to be there for you. I don't want you to feel abandoned. I want you to know that I'm here. How do I do that? And I want to be there for Benjamin, too. And you know what I realized? The best way to be able to be there for him is when I do my own homework. Yeah. Going back to my childhood, the messes, the wrong operating system, and allowing God to update, update, update them. And when I did hard work, I'm able to be there. I'm able to go to the third level and have mutual mind with Benjamin. And Benjamin is able to do the same thing with me. Can I just say this? 21 years of marriage. Right now, we experience the deepest intimacy because we are able, everybody say able, because we are able to see each other in the deepest places of our soul. Why? 
because we have taken responsibility of our own operating system, of our own strongholds in our minds, of our own pain, trauma, and we're dealing with them. And because of that, God has been removing the hindrances so that we could be there for one another. This is, I want to end with this. God has called you and I to walk in covenant relationship. How do I do that? How do I build? How do I walk with my church members in covenant relationship? You got to operate. You got to update your operating system, guys. You got to you, you have to do do your own homework. You have you got to un you can, you have to be unstuck in your own inside to be able to walk with people in deeper relationship. Everybody say be curious. Be the detective. Next time, you know that moment where you shut down and you get triggered? Ugh. I can't believe my husband did that. I can't believe my wife would do that. I can't believe my sister, my friend, my coworker. In those moments when you are triggered, instead of subjecting yourselves in that pain, in that right trigger, be curious. Hmm, God, I'm feeling kind of angry. God. Huh, I wonder why this gets me like this. Wonder about when somebody isolates and that hurts you, instead of, ah, you can't trust, one, be curious. I wonder why is making my brother distance himself. God, I wonder what he's going through. Be curious, be the detective, and be open. Stay open. Don't make quick judgments, because once you make the judgment, it gets stored. And that level two. And it becomes a new operating system. Everybody say, it's okay. Look at your neighbor and say, it's okay. Look at your other neighbor and say, you just need an update. <laughs> Look at me, people. It's okay to feel awkward. It just takes time. It's okay that you get triggered. When you see other brothers and sisters, they look like they're so close and you feel like an outsider. That's okay. That's okay. It does not mean that you are not important to them. It does not mean that you are rejected. It doesn't mean any of that. You just need a system update. You know, you and I could hold different truths at the same time. Immaturity says, you have to nullify and reject one truth if they are opposite. Let me give you an example. Jonathan, he held both realities. He loved David as his own soul. If, sometimes, if you're immature, you're like, then I have to deny my father. I have to, I have to cut my relationship with my father. He is wrong. Or I'm his son. I have to cling to my father. That means I can't be friends with David. No, Jonathan held both reality. He loved David. He made covenant with David. But did you know, Jonathan, he fought in the battle till his death. He stuck right next to his father. As imperfect Saul was, how as selfish Saul was, Jonathan held both of them in his heart. He walked with David all his life. He loved David. He walked with his father. You and I, when we get hurt, we just deny and nullify all the good. Oh, that's it. Fine. Time to find another church. Oh, that's it. I need to get a divorce. Oh, that's it. The other day, I was so proud of myself. I did that, you guys. I could, have had, I could have had an amazing day. And one thing, bad thing happens. I nullify all the good and said, oh, it was a terrible day. I just couldn't hold both realities at the same time. But when you work on your homework and run to Jesus with your own pain and not blame others, but ask the Holy Spirit, help me to do my own homework with my own past pain, Lord. Help me to mature in the areas where I have been stuck. Re-update my operating system, God, 
When you do your own work, now all of a sudden, you are able to hold different truths. I was having a great day last Sunday. I was able to see a lady connect with her school friends that she hasn't connected with for a whole year. My heart was full of thankfulness. But then Benjamin was having a very difficult time for a very personal, difficult reason. Usually, in my immaturity in the past, this, once this happened, something good was no more good. I forget. But now this took over. But you know, that day I was able to hold both. God, thank you that you bless Aletheia. I wonder why you bless me. I wonder why you gifted me with this gift of watching my daughter, connecting with her friends. And you know what God told me? She said, Sonny, it's because I want to update you, my daughter. You once believed that you will suffer alone and die alone. And you see yourself in Aletheia and you're afraid that she's going to suffer alone and die alone. But I want to update you that Aletheia has favor because she has you as a mother. She has Benjamin as a father. She has favor from people because I favor her. She will be different. She will not suffer what you have suffered. And even the things that she's going to suffer in life, I'm going to give her capacity and wisdom to deal with it and to hold my goodness in her life. And then I'm holding that. And then I'm watching Benjamin crying, wailing, praying. And in that moment, God, I wonder why. I wonder why this is so painful to him. God, I wonder why when he's struggling, my heart resists to be there. God, I wonder why. You wonder and you become curious about what's making him suffer and why, I, why am I not able to be there? God, I want to be there for what's going on. And God started to update, Sonny, because you once believed, but now you believe. And I was able to hold both. I was able to be thankful and enter into Benjamin's suffering and be with him. And then, you know, that night, we finished that night with our hearts full of thanksgiving, with the presence of God filling our home. I hear the Lord saying, son, daughter, let me update your operating system today. Would you like that? Then stand up right now in the presence of God. Hmm. I hear the Lord saying, you got to update. You once believed that you have to stay home and that ga not gather, not come to church. You're kind of used to just sitting on the couch and just, just watching and you feel like it's okay. And guess what? Last, it was okay for more than a year. But you need to update that system. It is not okay anymore because you need the church. You need to come and gather in the presence of God. You need to be knitted together with brothers and sisters and become the dwelling place of God's presence. God is saying, you need to renew your covenant with God and with one another. That's why there's a link that's being dropped right now where you could follow the direction and renew your covenant with this house, with God and with us. It's a spiritual act. You once believed that if it doesn't come natural, it's not meant to be. You once believed that you don't belong. You once believed that no one cares. You once believed that you are not important enough. You once believed that you are not accepted, that you are rejected. You once believed, and today God wants to update your belief. So will you open your arms before God? You know that button in your computer, update? Let's push that right now. Come on, come on. In your mind, push. Invite the Holy Spirit. God, come operate. Come update my operating system. Is there any lies that I've been living out of? Is there any pain that I've been living out of?
of? Is there a wrong belief that I've been living out of? The wrong beliefs that kept me from entering in to deeper covenant relationship, to deeper friendship that you have meant for your sons and daughters to have. Spirit of God, under my voice, will you update our operating system? Update our beliefs. Update, got to update us today. Matthew, I want you to lead. I want to give you just a few minutes to just spend some time with the Lord. Be curious, God, what needs to be updated in my mind? Come on, allow the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to come back and pray for you just for one minute, guys. Come on, come on, enter into, ask God some questions right now. God, what needs to be updated in my life? God, what belief do you need to update? God, what do you want to update in me? Come on, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you and to update you this day. Come on. Come on.